One of the great things about Linux is you've got a huge amount of choice. There are so many Linux distributions out there that cater for so many different categories of user. You want something on the server, no problem. You want something on the desktop, no problem. You want something that's small and light, no problem, and so on. There are so many different uh, variations. At the same time as that being great, it can also be a weakness because when people move over to Linux or want to try it out, they don't know where to start. If you ask someone about Windows, well, you've got Windows 10 or you've got Windows 11, that, that's basically your choice. If you've got Mac OS, well, most people just upgrade to the latest version uh, that is available. It's just, it's just Mac OS. Linux, well, there's Ubuntu, there's Debian, there's Arch, there's, and there's a whole long list. Now, to try to help you fight your way through that big a uh, list of options. In this video, I want to look at what are the best Linux distributions that use the KDE uh, desktop environment. So Linux distributions with KDE. We're hurtling towards 2025. So which ones are the best ones to consider for the new year ahead of us? So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now, before we get cracking, just a couple of housekeeping tasks. One is I've chosen these distros. Yes, there are others. Sorry if I didn't cover your favorite one, but these are the ones that I picked. Also, there's nothing here based on Fedora or any of those related kind of distributions because uh, Red Hat no longer publishes the source code to Red Hat Enterprise Linux for the public to see. And Fedora is basically a wholly owned project by a Red Hat, sponsored by Red Hat. And Red Hat uses the Fedora community as free labor to do all their bug testing. And then they take that stuff and it ends up making its way through to Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So I refuse to do any stuff related to Fedora. Having said that, let's carry on. Okay, so let's get cracking on this. The best KDE based Linux distros as we are hurtling now towards 2025. Of course, the first question we have to ask ourselves is, what is KDE? We're looking for a KDE distro. Well, it's a graphical desktop environment for Linux and other Unix-like OSs. It was uh, founded in 1996, created in 1996, and named as an intentional wordplay on the then existing CDE, the common desktop environment, which was available for commercial Unix systems at the time. We're talking, you know, from Sun and from HP and from digital uh, and so on. So CDE, KDE, that's where it, it came from. And its toolkit that it uses is Qt or Qt, which is the libraries for creating the uh, actual user interface. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. And then there was a kind of a rebranding back in 2009 where the KDE project as a whole was split into some smaller projects. And so now you've got KDE Plasma, which is the desktop, KDE Gear, which is the apps, and KDE Frameworks, which is the libraries and software built on top of Qt. And by doing that, it means that each of those three things can progress at their own pace. So before they were all tied together, when there was a major release, there had to be a major release of the apps and the desktop and the libraries. Now they can kind of get released at their own pace. And of course, the most visible thing is the desktop itself, KDE Plasma. So it's the desktop environment for KDE. Some of the big ones since that rebranding, I mentioned KDE uh, Plasma 5, 2014 it came out, fully migrated to QML, which uses OpenGL for hardware acceleration. So of course that improves the uh, fluidity and the response time. Built on top of Qt5 and now because it's a separate subproject, the KDE Frameworks 5, and I said we'll mention Qt again in a moment. Uh, and then you've got Plasma 6, which came out this year. So that's really the kind of the newest one. Uh, and it changes the default display server from X11 to Wayland, although X11 is still available. Now Plasma 6 is built on top of Qt 6, and therefore the KDE Framework 6 and uh, KDE Gear 24.02. So I've mentioned Qt, what is Qt? Well, it's a cross-platform application development framework for creating graphical user interfaces. It's been out since 1995. It comes under a dual license. There's the GPL, LGPL version, mainly under the LGPL, but some modules are available only under GPL, which means that if your application links against them, you have to release your source code as open source. If it's LGPL, you can still keep that closed source and use Qt, but there's also the Qt um, 
commercial license allowing you to develop uh, proprietary applications uh, with no restrictions as related to open source li uh, licensing. So it's been very successful. Uh, at one point it was even owned by Nokia and it's the underlying framework that KDE is built on top of, but it's all open source. Okay, our first distro is Neon, and that's straight from the developers of KDE themselves. So it is a Linux distribution created by KDE. It uses Ubuntu, a long-term release 22.04 at the moment of making this video, to showcase exactly what KDE can do as the KDE developers intended it. No patches, no changes, no modifications, pure KDE. Uh, it's primarily intended for more technical users who want immediate access to the latest KDE offerings, as I mentioned, based on the long-term support versions of Ubuntu, which means you're going to get the underlying OS, the Linux and the other stuff is going to get that long-term support, but KDE itself is rolling. That means you're getting frequent daily updates as they make them. Uh, they're coming out to the KDE desktop, but not KDE, not Ubuntu underneath. That is coming out at the normal pace that uh, Ubuntu is, is uh, updated. And it uses Wayland uh, and KDE 6, and it uses the Calamares uh, installer, which a lot of these KDE distros use. So here's what you get when you first boot up, showing you the uh, pure, uh, unadulterated version of KDE. Gives you this welcome screen, which tells you you need to click on this install item. It's a live DVD, live CD. Uh, and it also, it's simple by the plasma is designed to be simple and usable out of the box. That's really what everything we're talking about in this video, KDE base, that's what they're talking about. Menu bar at the bottom, bottom left hand side is where the start menu is, right hand side for the clock calendar, tray items, very, very uh, familiar. Once you do click on that install item, and you go through this uh, installer, as I said, which is used by many, many distributions, not all of them, but many of them, very simple, set your location, pick your keyboard, type in your password and you're kind of away. And then once you do that and you reboot, this is what you get up, of course, very similar to the live um, system, but I wanted to show that it's using uh, Plasma 6.1.5. Here are all the other versions, uh, and here's a copy of uh, Static etc. slash uh, OS releases. So we can see it's based on Ubuntu, based on Debian, and then uh, it's the KDE build it's coming from KDE.org, as you can see there. Next up, again, another uh, stable version of KDE, this time from Debian. Uh, KDE Plasma is one of the desktop options that you can pick in uh, Debian. Of course, it's renowned as a distro for its stability, for its large number of packages. Uh, it really is sometimes the foundation of other Linux distros like uh, Ubuntu and Kubuntu in this case, because it's the KDE version. So it's kind of the, the grandfather the grandmother of, of uh, Linux distributions. Uh, and of course, it's got such a large uh, set of uh, software available. That's maybe the largest repository of any Linux distribution and uh, is very committed to open source. So there's not any non-free software in the kind of the default uh, setup, although that is available if you choose to go uh, and, uh, and opt for that. Uh, so Debian very much championing just the open source approach. And notice here it does use KDE5. As I said, KDE6 came out in February. So some of these uh, distributions haven't caught up to that yet, but it is using Wayland. Now you don't use that Calamari's uh, installer like you did in the Neon and some of the other ones. This is basically you get the standard Debian uh, installer. And then at this point, when you come to pick your desktop, you want to make sure you tick KDE Plasma. And that's what will then give you that. Uh, during uh, the install and then here is what it looks like when it starts up and again here is that info page we can see that it is a uh, Debian this is bookworm and it's using version 5 so it's not, uh, but it is using Wayland okay Kubuntu sort of KDE Ubuntu it's the official variant of Ubuntu with KDE there's long-term support versions available very, very good. You get years and years of support. Of course, Ubuntu is known for its reliability and stability. Huge number of packages as well available for a big online community. And in this case, you're getting X11 plus KDE5. So another interesting variation, the third variation that we're getting here. Uh, and it uses that same installer, as I've mentioned before. So you can notice here, although it looks you know, the look and feel is slightly different. You can see it's that same thing down the left-hand side here. Keyboard, users, click install, and it goes ahead uh, and does it. And just a couple of the things here that they want to just point out that uh, 
KDE Plasma Desktop is the heart of uh, Kubuntu uh, and it's customizable uh, and so on. And this is what it looks like when it gets booted up. And then again, that info screen showing it is QT5, KDE5, and then you can see here the long-term support, 24.04 long-term support based on Ubuntu. Okay, so this is a really interesting one, OpenSUSE. It's one of the most popular alternatives to the other mainstream Linux distros, which tend to be based on you know, Debian Ubuntu or Red Hat Fedora or on Arch. This really gives you a fourth kind of independent distro that's not got its roots in those other distributions. Uh, so that is a good option for you to look at. It is one of the oldest major Linux uh, distributions. You do have the choice of KDE, uh, XFCE or GNOME uh, of, uh, when you install it. And there is a rolling release version, which is called Tumbleweed. So you can either have the kind of the traditional stable one where you just get your updates, you know, uh, every so often. Or you can have the open, uh, the rolling release Tumbleweed, uh, which is what I actually use here. Uh, and you get KDE 6 with X11. That's because I'm using Tumbleweed. If you go to the other one, I don't think that's yet been updated to KDE 6. Now, I just wanted to show this screen, although it's not very interesting, it's just a, you know, a black screen. That's my red dot cursor, get that out of the way. Uh, this is just to show you that it's not like how the other ones boot, because it is a proper kind of different distro compared to Ubuntu, Debian, uh, uh, and so on. Uh, and it's got its own installation process, which again is unique to this distro. And then at this point, you can get to pick which desktop you want. And the first one there is the KDE Plasma one. And there you go, once it's all installed and boot up, you get that familiar KDE desktop. And as you can see here, it's using version six. And as it shows us here, this is uh, a tumbleweed. Uh, that's the rolling update one with all that information there. So if you're not into Debian or you're not into uh, Fedora, you're not into Arch, then this is certainly the way to go. Now, uh, Endeavor OS is a very popular Linux distribution. It's based on Arch Linux, which means you get the latest cutting and bleeding edge software. It's rolling release that you get in always the most up to date uh, system without needing to do another install, upgrade to the next version. Uh, you get access to the Arch user repository and you get Wayland and KDE 6. And I must say it does look very, very nice. This is what you get when you boot it up, first of all. And then you can go here and you can click on start the installer. This is the live uh, CD, the live DVD. You can go ahead and click that and install it. Same installer. So again, that's familiar idea, but of course they've got their own theming, their own skins on that here. And then once you boot up, you then get this uh, welcome screen, which you can disable, of course. But it's, this is like after install, so all the things you can do uh, after the install. And as you can see here, version six, uh, and this is Endeavor based on Arch rolling release. And it does look very nice. It's eye candy wise, very, very nice. Cache OS is a very interesting uh, Arch based distribution. Uh, again, easy to install, but the key thing with this is it's got performance optimizations. So they've built their kernel in a certain way using the burst orientated response enhancer scheduler. Okay, and all of the kernels are built and optimized for x86, 64, v3 and v4 and Zen 4. It automatically detects which kind of CPU you've got. This isn't going to work on older PCs. This isn't going to work on 32-bit PCs. This is specifically for newer hardware. Now, I do have a whole video on what is x86, 64, v3. I touch on v4 as a context of that as well. It doesn't use just the default Firefox. It's got a fork of it called the Cache Browser, which has got additional security features and again, performance optimizations. And as I said, all the packages are compiled for 64-bit uh, V3 or V4, and you're getting Wayland and KDE 6. Uh, again, eye candy is pretty nice. Uh, this is what you get when you boot it up. You can launch the installer from the live DVD. Uh, again, similar idea, same, same installer, but now those icons, those steps are down here at the bottom, but same thing, keyboard, uh, username, pick your disk, you can install it on and so on. And uh, you can pick different desktops. Uh, you don't have to have uh, KDE. Uh, you can pick different ones and there are loads. Look at how many there are. 
uh, so many of them. Uh, and I cover a lot of these in my video about which Linux distro uses the least amount of memory. I hope you had a chance to watch that video. Some of them I didn't cover. One person wrote in the comments, why didn't I cover any i3 window manager based ones? That was uh, an oversight there on my part. Uh, but there you go, you could pick, but you can pick uh, Plasma as well. And then once it's up and running, you've got a nice help screen there. And uh, here's some interesting information. So again, using version six, here's the information from uh, NeoFetch, uh, Wayland and uh, version six of KDE. So there you go. And that kernel using their particular performance uh, patches. Manjaro is another uh, Arch based one. Benefits of the Arch operating system, but with a focus on user friendliness. Again, rolling release, again, access to the Arch user repository, plus some dedicated Manjaro repository. There's the graphical software manager that they've built into that so you can install software easily. Comes with the codex pre-installed so you can play multimedia files and you can pick between KDE, XFCE and GNOME versions. X11 this time with KDE 6, same installer, again, live DVD, launch the installer, same steps as we see another one, different skin, uh, and then once it's all installed, here we go, X11 but, but number 6, KDE 6, and there's all the other information there, rolling arch, uh, and so on. Okay, the last one we're going to look at is uh, Chaos, uh, and this is an independent distribution focused on QT and uh, KDE, tightly integrated rolling and transparent distribution for modern desktop, not based on Arch, uh, okay, and it's just focusing on one desktop. It's not going to offer you GNOME and, and everything else. You're going to have KDE and that's it. One architecture only. It's not available for the Raspberry Pi. It's not available for 32-bit PC, 64-bit only. The idea is they want to give you the best KDE 64-bit uh, distro out there. Uh, and also it has limited repositories. Uh, now, they're doing that intentionally so they can say you get all the core stuff and we're going to make sure it builds well, it's high quality. But there is also the community packages where if you've built packages yourself, you can upload them there so that other Chaos users can benefit from them. Now, there was an interesting line in the web page, a large user base is not what is intended or expected. So it's defining itself as a niche, but hopefully as a niche that will do what it's meant to do to a very high quality. That's why I've included it here. Uh, in this roundup, Wayland and KDE6, same installer. Uh, so there it is. When you come up, you can click on install it. Uh, nice install, but notice now different skin, but those same steps down here at the bottom this time, uh, you know, picking the disk. This time I've highlighted, you can pick between ext4, butterfs, zfs, and so on. And then once it's booted up, you get this uh, nice welcome screen. But I did want to point out that the menu bar now is here on the right. That's a bit different. So the, the menu is top right here, not rather than uh, bottom left. And then if you click on the info, there we can see KDE 6 with Wayland. And we can see here that it's a rolling distro. And they're not saying it's based on, you know, uh, Debian or anything else like that. It's, it's They're kind of independent in that sense. Okay, so what does that leave us? Well, if you want the latest and the greatest KDE desktop directly from the KD project, then go with Neon. Simple as that. If you just love desktops and you want the latest and the greatest, you go there. If you are a Debian or Ubuntu fan, then either opt for Debian with KDE or Kubuntu. Kubuntu is an official build, long-term support, so you've got your choice there. If you like Arch, as you could see, there were quite a few uh, variations there. Lots of choice, but Endeavor OS is one of the most popular for sure. And if you want something outside of Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, or Arch, then definitely go with OpenSUSE. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>